imagine a world where you've watched my part one tutorial of AO Oni and you created all of that, but then maybe like two months later, you decide, I want this old map to have the AO Oni in it. But whatever you use for the event ID of AO Oni, it's being used in a cutscene. And now you gotta mess with your whole entire program. But what if I were to tell you, no, you, you don't have to mess with the entire program. Because we can recreate, no, no, no. Not recreate, but improve the AO Oni script. So that it's more efficient for us in the future. It makes life so much better and so much easier. Sup dogs, the Odie here, and in today's tutorial, we're going to take everything we learned in part one of AO Oni, put it into common events, and use script calls. Script calls is going to make this so much more fluid for us in the future, and some of you guys may be afraid of using script calls because, you know, you're going into computer programming that you try to avoid in the beginning, but it's actually very, very easy, and as you get into script calls and the sort of things that you can do in rpg maker just jumps an entire level it is absolutely incredible so let's get to it so recall last time this is what the code looks like and we can simplify it by first turning it into a common event so all we do is just Control a to select all Control x to cut okay F9 to enter our common events and as you can tell I already created one that's called AO Oni Spawner and we're just going to paste all of the innards inside and we can hit OK go back to our spawner and now we just got to go on to page one find the common event and there it is and I'm just going to do this for all the other events in the different rooms. So now having fast forwarded all of these event spawners now have the AO Oni inside of it. So going back to our common event we see that for these they all must use the same event ID too. Alright so now let's say that you made all these different maps and you decided that hey you know what there's this one map that I didn't have the killer spawn in but now I want it to spawn in and rather than having to edit this every single time or edit the IDs to make sure that he is two every single time because who knows maybe that event two previously was being acted upon in a cutscene or something else so what we can do instead is to use script calls and using script calls we can use it based upon a variable so we can say that a brad id in 78 it is any number that we decide to assign it with and that is the id of brad for this this and this and of course this variable would not be inside the common event and instead it would be inside the spawner right here so i'm gonna just assign this for two because that's his id in this room but going back in here, let's take a look at some script calls. So down in the comments is the spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet has been compiled by several fantastic users within the RPG Maker community. This one is for both MV and MZ since they both use JavaScript. So their call features are pretty much the exact same. And to read them, you have the event command here, the script calls that you would have to enter, an example definitions so for this one you see face name and you're like what's a face name well a face name is a string that's how it's declared and it's a name of the face set to use and then in here is any additional comments that they feel like should be helpful so going back into RPG maker the first thing we're going to do is turn Brad transparent so going back into the spreadsheet, and we just do control F and type in transparent. After a bit of a search, you can find that there's a transparency on and off. 
and by looking at the example, it says make map event four invisible until further notice. Game map dot event four dot set transparency true. So I'm gonna just take this and control copy back into RPG Maker into my script calls and control paste. So now this one will always make event four transparent. Of course, ours is two. So we can set it like that. However, remember that we want to make this universal so that the ID gets defined on the map as opposed to in the common events. If we were to read this from top to bottom, like in classic RPG Maker, looking at our map event, first it assigns ID as two, and then it calls the common event. And inside the common event, it will just do everything from top to bottom. So of course, we do not want this to be two. Instead, what it should be calling is the value of the variable. And we can edit this by highlighting and pressing space as a hotkey. We want to get rid of this too, and instead enter this command. So the script call to getting a value of a variable is this command that you see highlighted and make sure that it is capitals sensitive but of course in this parentheses what we want is the variable id which is 78 so in here we just change this to 78 in this line of code will do exactly what this line of code is doing so we can get rid of this and you'll notice that this line of code is the same as this line of code or mostly just the exception of turning towards player so we can just copy paste it in here and change true to false however we do want the event to turn towards the player so let's see if we can find that in our spreadsheet here it is turn toward player so Here's the command. I'm just going to highlight, copy, back in RPG Maker. Inside here. And you could edit it in the same one, or you can create a new script command. That's totally fine. And similarly, we do want this whole entire script call for that variable. So control copy. And inside, control, oops, sorry, it's here, it's control, paste. And now we can get rid of this one. Now you'll notice there's one more to go, which is teleporting the event. Back into our spreadsheet, let's go look for sent event location. And here it is. So you can see up top here, control, copy back into RPG Maker, and another new script call, control paste. And of course, we don't want two, we want this. Control copy, and control paste. Now you'll see that this will send them to location three, four, but where we actually want to send them to is the ID of 79 and ID of 80. So we're gonna replace this with That's the X, and just gonna highlight, copy, and paste, because that's a lot faster. And 80. Ta da! So, the main thing about script calls is that they are a little bit harder to read. They're not color coded for one thing, and then for the other one, of course, instead of knowing what you define ID 79 as, which is Brad X, this one, you're just reading it flat out. The third thing is that you do have to manually count your parentheses. Make sure that you have a closing parentheses for every open parentheses. All right, so I can hit OK here. And let's go up to Apple. And you know how Brad is at ID 2? Let's change him. Let's make him at ID 4 and get rid of Brad number 2. And now inside the spawner event, we're going to create a variable, and that's Brad ID, and let's put them at four here. So for bacon, it's at two, 
and we're also going to leave it as two for everywhere else except for Apple. And this is how we're going to test to see that it works. All right, let's run it. So there he goes. Remember, this one's Apple. Ah, there he goes, chasing me for all eternity until he gets me, then he tells me that, holds me between his arms, and winks. Up close in my face, he shall wink. Oh boy, how, how terrifying. Oh god, he almost got me. <laughs> and of course, the last room. Got me. And there you have it, it all works. No, oh, no, he got me. Ah, oh, stop it. No, it's too much. Shazam, there you go. Aoni, but even better. So now, in the future, all you gotta do is change that variable ID number, assign whatever it is, and it just does the rest. Life is easy. See how great script calls are? In the next one, we will check out the hide mechanic for this Aoni system. And it's actually not all that challenging. You do have to think in pieces, like Lego blocks, focusing on one thing and then to the next thing, and then looking from an outward perspective to put it all together and connect them. It's kind of neat when you think of it like that. Anyway, hope you guys are excited for it, and see you in the next one. Ladder. <laughs>